I, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, talk to your viewers and explain to your viewers about uh, CDM. Because CDM is a very important uh, United Nations mechanism. It is a mechanism that allows uh, industrialized countries, developed countries, to be able to invest in emission reduction projects in developing countries. For example, a company in Norway can invest in a clean cooking stove project in Nigeria, or a company in Germany can invest in a biomass project in Mexico, or England can decide to invest in a wind power project in India, for example. And then the emission reductions that accrue from these projects are certified and can be used by the developed countries to meet part of their Kyoto targets. And countries that have, uh, that have uh, more than what they need for their Kyoto targets can sell some of these credits, and countries that don't have, have that, that, that are short of their Kyoto targets can buy some of these credits. So this is, this is a mechanism that actually then allows investment in energy reduction projects in a cost-effective way. So it helps to incentivize the private sector to invest in energy reduction projects. So CDM for, is, a, is a very, very uh, important tool in, in meeting the challenge of climate change. And the advantage of CDM for the developing countries that are hosting those projects is that these projects assist them, like the example I've given, uh, wind power project in India, uh, clean cooking stove in Nigeria, biomass project in, in Mexico, assist these countries to meet part of their sustainable development aspirations. Thank you. I think the, the, two, the two sides of, uh, of the criticisms you've just mentioned uh, shows the, the, the challenge that the regulatory authorities that are mandated to regulate the CDM faces. Because the first thing we have to, we have to admit is that because of the nature of the CDM, we have to accept certain complexity because you want to make sure that the mechanism is credible. You want to make sure that the emission reductions are credible and that when you certify that a ton of emission has been reduced, a ton is truly a ton. Therefore, we have to accept that, yeah, some level of complexity has to be involved. However, as a, as a, a mechanism, that is meant to address a global problem, we have to also make sure that it's effective. And making sure that it's effective means that wherever we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have realized that the process is complex, we have to try as much as possible to see how we can simplify and streamline the process without compromising the integrity of the, of the mechanism. So yes, there has been a lot of criticism about the complexity of the CDM, but I'm happy to also say that a lot of improvements have been made in the past few years to streamline the process and to make sure that the CDM is uh, fit for purpose. But with regards to CDM being subject to abuse, again, I, I, I would like to point out that as a financial instrument, the CDM is, uh, is facing similar challenge that all financial markets faces. And, 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 uh, and, and the CDM cannot be immune with the kind of uh, challenges when it comes to possibility for abuse that, f that uh, many financial markets face. But what we are happy to be able to announce publicly is that the nature of the process the rigor of the process and the oversight that, 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 uh, that the regulatory bodies have over the process 
and the, the rigor of our standards and the way those standards are applied, uh, the potential for abuse in CDM is kept to, to a minimum. Obviously, when parties agreed, when countries, through the negotiation of the Kyoto Protocol, agreed to establish an instrument like the CDM 12, 13 years ago, the, it has not been done before. It has not been tried before. They were entering into a new territory. Therefore, it was recognized right from the onset that this is a process that is going to evolve through learning by doing. Um, and, and I can say that when we see the CDM of today, it's not the CDM of seven, eight years ago. And um, I'll just mention a few areas where a lot of improvement have been done into the CDM. One area is the revision of the registration and issuance, issuance process. Uh, at the very beginning of the CDM, it was a very, very complex process and project participants and various stakeholders complain that it takes too long to get a project registered. I was at a conference uh, once in Australia when uh, I was told that it takes almost 260 something days to get a project registered. I'm very happy to say now that uh, after a lot of improvement to the registration procedure, uh, it takes much, much less to register a project now. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the regulatory body is now committed to a waiting time of between 15 days and, and, and 30 days for, 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 for commencement of, of, uh, of, of registration of projects. So a lot of improvements has taken place and streamlining has taken place in the procedure for registration and issuance of projects. Another area of improvement is some innovative approaches that have been that have been developed, such as a program of activities. Program of activities is, is, a, is an approach that allows large-scale emission reductions to be achieved from pulling together small projects of uh, pro project activities that on their own would not have been viable. So by pulling these projects together into a program of activity, it helps to reduce complexities that will have been involved if these projects were dealt with as individual projects. Another area of improvement and innovative approach is the approach to standardized baselines. Uh, a standardized baseline is developed for a group of projects or for a sector in such a way that if anybody has any project that fits into that sector where a standardized baseline is already approved, they don't have to develop their baselines for their individual projects using a project-by-project project approach. This is also very helpful in, 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 in streamlining the process. A very important improvement that we have seen in the regulatory system is the responsiveness of the regulatory system to stakeholders. See, we, for the CDM, the stakeholders now are, more, are much, much closer to, to, to the regulatory system than a few years ago. Uh, a lot of capacity building activities have been initiated and we have just recently complemented our help desk together with our teleconference with, with the project participants. We have complemented that now by establishing uh, regional collaboration centers whereby in partnership with organizations, we can provide on-the-ground support to, to project participants and designated national authorities. And I'm, and I'm happy to, to tell your viewers that we now currently have four regional centers in operation, two in Africa, one in Latin America, uh, and two in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, the two in Africa, one is in Togo, and the other one is in, Kampa, in, in Uganda. And we have one in Granada, and we've just recently opened a regional collaboration center in Colombia.
the, the challenge of uh, climate change that the UN faces is a daunting challenge, as science have told us. It's also a global challenge. And there is increasing realization that governments cannot solve the problem alone. So the contribution of the private sector uh, is, is very uh, crucial if we are going to be able to address the challenge of climate change effectively. And also what makes partnership with the private sector in particular very, very important is because uh, the, the, the source of the climate change problem is development. Industrialized, industrialization, industrial development, uh, and, and industrial activities, areas that are within the domain of the private sector are the sources of the emissions that leads to the climate change. Therefore, to be able to address the, the problem, it is good to involve people that have experience in that sector, the people that know exactly what, 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 I mean, what, what is causing the, the, the problem. So partnership with the private sector is very, very key. But when it comes to a tool like the CDM in particular, uh, I think partnership with the private se sector is very, very crucial and, and it's invaluable because CDM involves projects, viable projects. So it is good to have partnership and to involve in a meaningful way people who know how to conceptualize projects, people who know how to develop projects, people who know how to implement projects, and people who know how to monitor the effectiveness of the projects. And, and therefore, the private sector's uh, creativity, innovation, and, and entrepreneurial spirit is something that is very key. For, uh, for a tool like the CDM. We have 7,000, over 7,100 CDM projects currently in registration and, and, uh, and, in, in, and, and in operation in 89 countries. Um, so I have so many examples to share. But I know you will not give me all the time I need to go through all the examples I would have loved to share. So I would like to highlight three uh, in particular. Uh, the, 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 the one critical example I would like to highlight is a, is a cooking stove project in northern Nigeria, where uh, people's lives have really been changed, where uh, women, rural women, now have access to cooking, cooking, cooking uh, clean cooking stoves rather than, the, rather than relying on the previous method of uh, using firewood. So just, just seeing how that project is impacting on, 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 on people's lives and also uh, helping to reduce emission is, is a good one to highlight. I would like to highlight a, 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 a project that is, that is recently in the news, which is a, a, a portable solar lighting uh, project in, 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 in Bangladesh. Uh, the situation in Bangladesh with access to uh, electricity is very, very poor. And, the CD, and through this CDM project, since 2009 until now, about 50,000 portable uh, solar, uh, solar power systems have been distributed monthly, therefore giving many people in Bangladesh access to electricity, which they didn't have before the, the CDM project. Uh, a third example uh, is uh, the first program of activity that was registered in, in Mexico uh, that involves the distribution of uh, uh, energy efficient fluorescent lamp. And since the implementation of this project, uh, many households have seen a dramatic reduction in their electricity and energy bill, and a, and, 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 uh, and a lot of emission reductions have, have occurred as a result of the project. So there are many examples I would, like, I would have liked to mention, but what I would like to encourage your viewer to do is to visit 
our website, the UNFCCC website, and you'll see many examples of uh, CDM projects uh, on our website. I would like to see the CDM evolve in, uh, in, in, in many ways. Uh, first, because it has been a very successful instrument, I would like the CDM to continue in the current uh, trajectory by continuing in the current improvement, streamlining, making use of innovative approaches. Secondly, I would like to see the CDM evolve, continue to evolve as an effective tool that will inspire confidence in, in, in uh, countries to be able to take on uh, stronger and higher mitigation ambition. Because if the CDM continues to evolve as an effective tool, uh, countries will have uh, confidence to take on more ambition because they know that they have a tool that will assist them to meet the, 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 their targets. Thirdly, I would like to see the CDM continuing to evolve as an instrument that incentivize, continue to incentivize the private sector to invest more and more in clean energy technology. And uh, since the advent of the CDM in the past 10 years, the CDM has helped to leverage about I mean, more than 200 billion uh, US dollars in clean, uh, clean technology projects. So I would like the CDM to continue to, to, to evolve uh, in, in uh, capitalizing on, on the private sector investment more and more than whatever has been achieved so far. Because emission uh, reductions will not happen if countries that are developing now pursue a developmental aspiration in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in the usual way in the business as usual manner so for us to make sure that we are we are solving the problem of climate change and we are reducing it and not compounding it uh, developmental activities needs to follow the clean energy path the clean technology path therefore cdm as a tool evolving and continue to incentivize private sector investment in clean technology will be a very, very powerful tool. Uh, finally, I would like to see the CDM take center stage in any negotiation for new market mechanisms. Whatever new tools parties want to put in place to complement the CDM, I would like to see, to make, to, to see that the, the experiences and the lessons that are learned from the CDM are fully, uh, fully taken into consideration in this development so that all the evolving tools we continue to evolve around the CDM as a nucleus. So that is my vision for the CDM.